You know, it's so funny because when David Mill called me about designing Deadwood the first time, I was really in the process of like, I am leaving costume design. I'm not going to do costume design anymore. I am done with the film business. And David called me and he was like, Janie, I'm going to be doing a period show. It's 1870s. It's called Deadwood. I really want you to design it. And I was kind of like very calm on the phone. Like, okay, I want to do it. And then I remember hanging up with him and like screaming, oh my God, I'm so excited. I can't believe I'm going to be doing a period show. Like really, that's what I've been wanting to do. You know, it was amazing to be back on Deadwood. For us to be all together again was such an incredible experience. I mean, it all felt so familiar, but different at the same time. It was like coming home. 10 years went past like somebody snapped their finger. When I first read the pilot script, I just imagined the world to be so dirty and gritty. To design the movie was a little bit different in the way that the distressing was not as heavy, uh, the town, just design-wise, is a little more sophisticated. The characters have gotten a little older. You know, they still maintained their same characters. But I was pushing them into, you know, the 1880s. Outlier Deadwood days are over. Walk with the future. So this is the arrival costume for Alma Garrett. I just envisioned her arriving in blue because it's such a contrast from like all the browns and the earth tones of the town. You can see it's the longer jacket and also just the beautiful details of the soutache on the, on the skirt. This is the last costume that we see Joni Stubbs in. In the series, like I would have Joni wear gold a lot to signify that it was a gold mining town. And so I wanted to incorporate like those elements of gold for her again. And you can see uh, all of the details in the back of the skirt, where she has like the fancy bustle and the beading and the fringe. She's fancy, but it can't be too fancy. It still has to maintain that dead Woody and vibe. And then this is the what I call like the little bumblebee costume for Caroline. The stripes signify kind of like the new Trixie in town because Trixie always wore her black and white stripe uh, stockings. So I actually sourced this costume. Uh, it is a 1880s original genuine piece. I was just fortunate enough to be able to buy this piece and it's still in the shape that it's in and for the character Caroline to be able to wear this costume. Oh, there you are. Hello there. Looking for a ride I can pay. Al has not changed at all. He actually is still wearing the same suit that he wore in the series. Because when I was thinking about Swearingen's costume design, you know, I really was stumped because I was like, I just can't see him in anything else. The fabric that I made his three-piece frock suit out of, it really uh, like fed into the story of Swearingen because that pinstripe is like so textured. There's like all the highs and lows. On his vest, I had like one gold nugget button and the back of his vest is like in this red tapestry fabric that I love because it signified blood and passion. How do I look? Like Christ crucified. I love like creating a world where it's totally different from like the modern world. There's so many incredible moments in the film. I loved seeing the marching band go by and I also loved seeing all of the politicians in their black and white and in their top hats and I love the attention to detail in vintage clothing. I guess you could say, you know, Deadwood is not even vintage. It's even before vintage. You know, you always get that question like, what's your superpower? I'm like, my superpower is time travel. <laughs>